Okay. Uh, do you know who called this IAS a steel frame? It was Sardar Patel, the first Home Minister. And uh, this is what he said. Today, my secretary can write a note opposed to my views. I have given that freedom to all my secretaries. I have told them, if you don't give an honest opinion for fear that it will displease your minister, please then you had better go. I will never be displeased over a frank expression of opinion. You will not have a united India if you don't have a good all India service, which has independence to speak out its mind. So, so basically, um, can you tell me how do you? Put bureaucracy. Okay, I'll just maybe I'll just tell you. Uh, how do you put bureaucracy in the context of the total system? I would put bureaucracy like this. It is a democracy. People are electing uh, politicians and uh, who do not have knowledge, who do not have expertise. And they are to be assisted by the certain advisors. Because democracy doesn't have a, an automatic way of matching power and knowledge. Matching power and knowledge. So, power is going to somebody. Somebody else has the knowledge. And bureaucracy is supposed to have that knowledge. So the best way for power to be informed by the knowledge is that um, these people should freely express their opinion and the politicians should be in a position to find out and choose their alternatives. Okay. So Sardar Patel is saying that uh, you, you have to be frank and this is what you should do. Just tell me, any other idea you want to say? Hmm? Visha? No, sir. I, I am of the same. Okay. Can you repeat the theory that I gave? So basically, uh, in a democracy, mm. uh, people elect mm. uh, leaders who may or may not be knowledgeable in that particular domain where they are working. Okay. A and they need external help from people who specialize in that area. Okay. And that. Uh, you mean the bureaucrats have specialized and politicians are not specialized. It is not about specialization, it is just that. It's just that the power is not related to knowledge. But power requires knowledge. Exercise of power requires knowledge. So we have institutions that are supposed to give knowledge. And how does that knowledge come? Free and frank opinion. If they don't, if they are fearing, then they are not bring, giving that knowledge. Tell me, Mudit, what do you make of this? Yes, sir. Uh, I agree with your point. Okay. Sir, actually, bureaucracy is the bloodline of democracy. If there is no independent bureaucracy, then the democratic nature of the country is in danger, I think. Okay. We'll come to that. We'll just come to that. Just, just look at this line. Yes. Because the point in this bureaucratic-related issues is that um, you don't, you don't know how to create a plot, how to create an idea. Okay, I'm just giving different ideas. It is about how do you combine knowledge to power. How do you bring knowledge and power? What are the mechanisms by which power is exercised with the help of knowledge?
Okay. Am I clear? Yes, sir. Hmm? Oh, okay. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, so you just look at those points. Now, I'm just going to make a few observations like this only. Now, I'll just tell you something about what this book says about trust. Maybe we need to find okay. Read this. Can you create this? The author says, at one time, the situation was like this. In early 1964, you go through this, the collector of Beetle district of MP was asked by his chief secretary, Norana, to make preparations for setting up refugee camps. Only one sentence instruction was given, set up refugee camps. And the collector probably broke all the rules in the book. Yet set up camps within a week. Chief Secretary wrote, Collector carried out my roles in taking the above action. CM may approve. And CM wrote, I agree with the CS. Tell me what did that mean? Can somebody comment? Sir, it reflects the trust and uh, coordination. Exactly. So secretary tells the collector and collector does it. Chief secretary approves and chief minister approves. It ends. But now he says, this author we discuss in 2005, the whole kit and cabodule of spies and counter spies, vigilance people and people who spy on vigilance people, inquiry followed by inquiry, has so vitiated the system that civil services have reached almost the point of no return in the matter of efficiency, decision making, and effectiveness. Okay. I want you to memorize these statements and quotations and these events and through this only you can write a better answer. So what is the what is he saying? He is saying that, uh, that there was a trust at one time and now it is simply spying and counter spying and inquiry followed by inquiry. So paralyzing efficient decision making and effectiveness. So Saksena, the author of the book says, uh, trust that was there at one time is no longer there. So people are more concerned about how not to get caught. They don't think that if they do something that somebody above will protect as long as um, he's, he has done things honestly. Okay. And uh, so tell me, is this point clear? Uh, sir, second point is not clear. Uh, I have a little confusion. Thank you. That. Please tell me. Hmm. Sir, that whole paragraph, like what it is conveying. It says that uh, earlier, er, the first point is clear, right? In 1964. Yes, sir. That one is clear. But here he says that uh, the, now you have 
Mm. All kinds of spying, that is, I mean, something is done and somebody comes and inquire and then other kind of inquire, various questions are asked and uh, um, scrutiny is made and uh, administrators are paralyzed into doing anything. Because, because uh, they're always scared of getting caught, scared of uh, being misunderstood, and uh, scared of a charge that the power is being abused. Uh, so he says that the trust at one time is no longer there. We're just looking at issues now. Please, Rohit, I'll come back to you, Shibam. Okay, just one second. Shibam, is, the, is at least is this para clear to you now? Yes, 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 sir. Thank you. Fine. Arohita, please. Sir, uh, like, is the trust necessary to be built like this, like, you know, breaking all the rules and somebody will protect? Thank you. Please, please. Please, thank you. Please ask questions. Okay. I don't know otherwise how to answer the bureaucracy part, let me tell you. Yeah, this is not like a challenging, intellectually challenging and abstract. You have to generate questions and think. <clears throat> Her point is, thank you, is the trust necessary? Trust is necessary because the most important point about this administration that you should know is that rules, following rules don't lead you to anywhere. Now you tell me, this is the central point. Most people are convinced that if you are only following rules and right at any point of time without breaking down, breaking the rules, then you don't reach anywhere. That is the main point in this entire discussion on administration. So when you are breaking the rules, are you breaking with a personal motive? Are you breaking with a good intention? Who is there to certify that you did it with a good intention? If somebody trusts you, then he will think yes. If he doesn't trust you, then things cannot be done. This is the issue. Tell me, Rovita, is, is at least is the point clear to you? If you convincing or not, we'll come to this. Yeah, very convincing, sir. Yes, sir. Hmm? Very convincing. Yes, sir. Convincing, convincing or confusing? <laughs> convincing. Ah, please. I can tell you, you just make, write down points. I, I can, I'm just telling you, giving a blank check for your mains preparation. Just depend on me for both ethics and essay, just on these classes. Not that everything will come from these classes. No. These classes will give some crucial data and then you use your existing knowledge. Finally, you, you write for it for 500. Okay, so you don't have to make any extra preparation, but make sure that you understand all these points in the classes. Okay, that's my point. Is it is my point clear? Yes, sir. So, uh, uh, the main problem with bureaucracy related questions is that they are too obvious and uh, you just don't know what to write. So, we are raising certain issues. You just raise these issues. Why is the trust important? You just say, going by the rules, you reach nowhere. That is the point. If going by the rules reach to a desirable point, then actually you don't need ethics. You don't need to make an independent decision making. So uh, this is uh, this is not like a robotic exercise. Okay, why you can't go by the rules? Because rules can never be applicable to all the situations. The world is too complex to be captured through rules. That is a problem. So we have to understand the spirit behind the rules and what are the actual are the goals we are trying to see. So why is ethics needed when the rules are not there and rules are not going to be there? And in this situation, 
how do you make out what is right and what is wrong that is number one that is number one number one but even if you are think you are doing right which may turn out to be a wrong outcome which may lead to violation of rules how will your superior see this if he trusts you and then says okay bye but if he doesn't trust you then there is always a way of, by which you can be punished on the ground that you did not follow this rule you did follow that rule <clears throat> doida is it clear uh, yes sir clear sir let me tell you you whether you how much you learn depends upon how many questions you ask i have no other way of doing it if in the case of ethical thought i have videos and books and you can reach but in the case of bureaucracy let me tell you there is no book also this is the only book that i that is written on that is a decent one on indian education only book. i have not come across any other though i have read many i want to start public administration meaningless books so only through asking questions you can get more from me because of, because there is no theory it's only when you ask i i give for example in writing also how i read my book you can spoil an answer for example you wrote and i answered and you learned it only through questioning you you can learn this otherwise there is no way <clears throat> okay roita you are still you still have a question or yes. different question? yes yes a different question i mean related okay. to this but mm -hmm. if you see corruption he, it hugely reduced right like in a revenue department if you see we'll come to that. We'll come to that. be very specific because we are going to be around this issue all through in all the classes okay just did you understand why through rules action cannot be done and the role of trust just that much only yes within bureaucracy yes sir completely exactly thank you and if you have other questions you just write down in your notebook when there are appropriate context you can raise that question okay my own now so do these institutions and rules exist to generate that trust at an institutional level do you generate institutions yes. so the institutions and the rules for vigilance and uh, preventing corruption so don't don't they exist to generate the trust institutionally rather than uh, at the individual level or a personal level vigilance is there to capture if something goes wrong okay thank you just i mean you are asking very 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 good questions let me tell you this exactly is the problem with the administration there is no way by which if you do well something more will come to you that is very little of it but if you violate a rule if you break something then much more serious punishment is awaited it means punishment can be more though it is rare and reward very little you may think it is an extreme statement but let us compare from private administration in a private company will you be able to serve a survive for one month on the ground that you have not broken any rule they will ask my friend you may not have broken any rule but what did you do isn't it they will see how much they are getting out of you and if not enough they will reduce the salary if, if that doesn't if even after that um, you are not good in then they will throw you <clears throat> it means performance based existence whereas in a government administration it is not so rigorous selection process and after that it is nearly permanent you have to do something drastic to get to be out there is no performance based promotion performance based salary there is nothing like that so that is why people may prefer safe play so do you know why civil service uh, civil servant is supposed to have service module and blah 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 it is because there is no appropriate reward structure unless the civil servant thinks that is intrinsically rewarding are you getting me getting my point 
why a civil servant should think social service is important or contribution is important because if he doesn't think uh little is expected of him whereas in a private sector if he is interested in social service and that then they will worry are you going to be busy employer or somebody okay that is why civil service because of lack of appropriate incentive structure requires people with commitment and like in private administration and because the society is so complex and rules are so outdated or rules are uh, not good enough then people have to work as a team they believing in themselves let us do and if they believe like that they will do thank you you are raising questions to me they are important because do you know in other areas the 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 topic may appear difficult and so you raise questions but in this area it's not because it is difficult you just have to explore this way that way ah oh. munir tell me so because of the less reward and higher punishment that is why the trust is decreasing we can say that can we exactly that? exactly and that is also the reason why trust is needed yes so just look at how public administration is different from private administration and then incidentally just look at the connections i talked about politics and bureaucracy and knowledge and power and democracy and now i am talking about public and private just write down these are all the various connections through which you can write an answer otherwise you will face a blank sheet mudit are you getting my point yes sir hmm thank you as you ask more you will get more ask fundamentally because all that is written is in blah 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 it's meaningless they don't question so hmm and Same. let me tell you there are only few issues If you get a critical understanding of those few issues, everything is solved. Just identify the dimensions. I, I, just the dimensions. I don't know if you are making notes. Politics, administration, knowledge, power, democracy, public, private, incentive structure, like this. You know, in many areas I wrote books, but I I just could never write anything on administration. You know why? Because it was. least structured okay that is why you don't come across good books on administration not because there are no good administrators not because they don't know but it somehow is not amenable to a good text of writing for example can a good book be written on how to write a good answer that is not that is not possible administration also is like that that is why i have not come across good books on administration not that the people don't know not that there are no good administrators it is not like that it's just not amenable to writing it should come like this so thank you now i'll give you one thing which you may find interesting you will find interesting hmm So I have a question, sir. Just one second. I'm doing this cut and paste, but I'll do a better job in next class. I'll find out what is the. Maybe I should choose the shape first. 
I'll work out later. Okay. Now tell me, is this, are you able to see this on the board? Hmm? Yes, sir. Now go through this. It is marvelous. Arun Ghosh, sorry. Somebody shifted this. I'll just, I'll find out how to do it. This board doesn't take PDF document. Now, are you now, can you go through this? Okay. Hmm. Now, go through this. Can you read this? Uh, no, sir. You are not able to read this. Like full, it is not visible. Okay, go to 67% table then. Now, basically, I think I... Okay, I said, okay, there is an instruction problem here. All participants can view. Now it is okay, sir. Okay, now? Is it okay it now? Is okay, sir. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now go through this. It is a very interesting conversation. Arun Ghosh, who worked in various positions in GOI, said, at an early stage of my career, I was suddenly interested with a special assignment with enormous consequences. The secretary told me three things. One, you have to succeed and you will find all manner of rules which you may need to follow to succeed. You know, this is rule number one about administration. And don't tell me the rules stood in the way. Rule number one. Next to you. If you get into trouble breaking the rules, I will bail you out. A good officer. Third, if I have to bail you out, this will be the last assignment from me. So tell me, what does it mean? I found this a very interesting proposal. He's saying, this is a lesson I learned. First of all, did you understand the issue? Yes, sir. Hmm. Mudit, tell me why that issue and what does his superior want? Sir, his superior wants that you should break the rules for bringing the change, but do not get noticed. Exactly. <clears throat> break the rules. Why is it that should a civil servant enjoy breaking rules? Tell me. Sir, if he has the trust of his senior, then uh, for bringing social change, he no, will... No, no. Is it, is it for the joy of breaking rules or for something else? For something else. Exactly. And write like this only. It's not that I'm explaining to you and so you write the conclusion. Just the way I'm explaining is the answer. It's not that civil servant enjoys breaking the rules, not that he should enjoy. It is that, as he said, many rules will come in the way. But then you should break rules in what way? In such a way, you are not going to be get noticed. Caught. You are not going to be caught. But if you are caught, I will help you. But then this will be my last assignment. <laughs> I think this is the essence of administration. This is the essence of administration, I can tell you. I like this example. And he's saying, I learned it in the early stage of my career. So nice of him. He got, he got it. So, rules are meant to be broken, rule number one. 
but broken with a purpose not for breaking because something has to be done and then he superior is saying i am not i am not going to help you always you should handle it and if i bail you out today this is my last assignment very good so he is giving all the conditions and do you know politicians love superiors love such an officer politicians and superiors do not do not do not like a person who is always complaining no in the chief minister every day every in the end of the day he will discuss what are the problems what are the issues which district is giving problems they want somebody to solve the issues at his level and don't bring that those things to him if a collector handles all the problems and doesn't give a problem to chief minister chief minister will say same thing but in an rdo if an rdo handles the problems at his level collector is that if rdo is always saying why this could not be done this could not be done not that he shouldn't tell if there is an issue he should but he should to try at his level the best possible way because your superior has so many other things because primarily your superior or politician is interested in work getting done whether whether that work is constitutional or not that is a different issue we look into it okay so nobody wants to be told rules are not favorable of course if there is a significant legislation that is required to be passed you propose and let it be done but that is a different stage but when one work is given saying that this rule or that is not no handle it at your own level and finish it that is the that is what superiors like that is what politicians like so he is saying break because without breaking them you can't i will bail you up so don't worry third class is very very interesting if i bail you then forget me <clears throat> this is the spirit of administration if you ask my own now so then should we be willing to tolerate a minimum level of corruption because for many people uh, being corrupt is already a core one thing what is that so should we be willing to tolerate a minimum level of corruption then The... Corruption is different from breaking rules. Yes, sir. Don't equate but... these two. That is a problem. No, sir. I'm not saying that every broken rule will lead to corruption, but I'm saying okay. that some people might use it to their exactly. So that is the issue, right? That is why we have rules. Thank you. Why do we have rules to prevent abuse of power? But what is the problem with the rules? They prevent doing something good also. that is the issue if the rules are doing only negative thing then we will we'll drop all the rules why rules but rules are doing a positive thing and they also do a negative thing so it is about balancing the administrator is not a robot following rules he is a human being who has a healthy relationship with the rules and rules are the medium or the means through which he is interested in action maya are you clear all right sir okay mudit sir we can say that rule should be broken but the constitutional value should be upheld by the civil servant exactly 
like he should break the rules for the when the rules are being broken it is only for a past purpose yes sir exactly you are right no doubt thank you for a past purpose administration is not about following rules administration is about getting things done baskar please so i i'll give a specific context for this question so so that it is very specific i okay. think that trust is a non reliable way of efficiency if, i mean uh, even though what i completely agree with what you have uh, discussed hmm. but i think trust is a non reliable way of efficiency because trust is like a non renewable energy source we need more of it and we are running short of it how to sustain this for example if a if there is an element of trust between uh, a politician and a bureaucrat uh, mm -hmm. and then in the larger scheme of things the bureaucrat realizes that he was made a scapegoat uh, be because of breaking this uh, rules so how do we handle such kind of scenarios and the second part of the question is how did uh, how does an organization sustain that ethos of trust let's say for example army versus bureaucracy why is army relatively better than bureaucracy these are the two questions no can you be more specific let us look at the other question army versus bureaucracy okay first question is uh, how to sustain by... this how do we sustain this more and more need of trust because i think it's like a non renewable energy source that is true you are not out no doubt trust mm. how do we sustain this mm. how that is it sustainable is... exactly sure we will ask this question but definitely remember nobody is proposing an argument against the rules nobody is saying that we will go by trust alone that is not possible that is not possible but they are saying we had things other than these rules and what is happening to those other things is an issue it is not actually trust versus rules it is about trust plus rules yes sir i did not deny that i am saying mm. that mm. so how do we re renew is we will look into that that's fine this is not the last uh, discussion that's fine we will we'll keep it as a question okay uh, coming to army versus bureaucracy uh, as the things are more complex then the rules become more irrelevant this is i think i'll take it like this rules are more rules are more applicable when the situation is static when the context is clear when something new dynamics changing to that extent rules become less relevant it is like that so i think we can always look into the issue of trust versus rules okay so we we'll, we'll come to that okay we are not ending okay shubham you want to say something yes sir Huh. so my question is in line with baskar okay so actually yeah so how to build that trust and how to sustain that similar we'll look into that and sure. second question second question is uh, i think it is regarding one uh, is officer hmm. ashok kemka hmm. right sir he was unable to perform his uh, duty we can say sir can we question that he has some trust deficit or he was not following rules we will look into that specific officers we are going to look at because we are going to third chapter deals with specific officers only okay sir. thank you these issues will keep coming in every class nearly so we are just creating rising issues we are not going to complete them i will find a better way of 
presenting this. Okay. Now go through this. This is a different issue. Hmm. In MP, during fourth year, fourth five year plan, 1969-74, was under deliberation. The file was, the when file was sent, the minister refused to see. Okay, it was fourth five year plan. And when the deputy secretary went to request him, minister said he was not interested. And as the secretary was leaving, he was asked if a particular inspector was transferred. Tell me what do you make of this issue. Anyway, thank you for raising many questions. I want you to raise these questions, but don't think all those questions can be completely answered in that class. So you just write down. We raise certain issues of trust. You just raise, write them in the margins. Okay. Now come to this question. This is different, different issue. Tell me what do you make of this? What did we say as the uh, theoretical nature of uh, uh, politician and administrator? Can somebody revise? We sir, uh, hello. Vishal. Mm. Yes, sir, Srikar, sir. Ah, Srikar. Mm. What did we say the theoretical nature? You are asking, you are answering my question or you are commenting on this statement? Mm, theoretical nature of, uh, I'm commenting on this statement, sir. Fine, okay, you can come to that. Fine, okay, then fine. Mm. Sirikar. Yeah, interests of the politicians and uh, the bureaucrats are different, sir. Politicians mm -hmm. always look for uh, uh, their service to how to win the election and how uh, they are more interested in to go, um, protect, uh, secure their uh, po uh, re-election like that. But uh, mm -hmm. bureaucracy is all about doing service to the people. Sir. Mm -hmm. So here there is, I find in the statement there is a conflict between the politicians okay. uh, and you, you found that is one way of looking at it. Can somebody be more specific on this? That is, you are saying that the bureaucrat is interested in welfare and the politician is interested in self-interest. It is not really. There is something. No, no sir, no, sir, no, sir, no, sir. No, not, mm. not like that. Mm. Uh, here, uh, actually, he was not interested that uh, that means uh, the inspector transfer, he, he has his own interest. That means uh, that so is you what have I, a politician. Okay, I'll help you. You have a politician who refuses to see the plan. That is ah, yes, sir, yes, sir. That, that is that 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 is what. But he wants whether a particular inspector was transferred. Yes, sir. What do you make of this? Let me tell you, this is a very, very serious issue. So what do you make of this? Okay, we shall read this. Mm. Sure. I think it's similar to uh, what we discussed earlier in the beginning between power and knowledge. Okay. Uh, the, the plan, I think it requires a lot more uh, knowledge about that topic no, and the much politician is... no, no no let us do it who else raise the hand ah, Rohita, please answer answer fast sir is it like uh, like a blackmail that if once that like if no, you do Sai it Vinod. no Sai Vinod. Sir, hmm? what is that and then minister, it is not audible. Hello. Okay, Mudit, next, your answer. Sir, it shows the trust deficit. The minister has the trust in his junior, but the junior does not have the trust in his minister. <laughs> you mean the junior is not interested in minister? Okay. Because the uh, junior has... No, no. Maybe Baskar will give the answer. Baskar, please. I think you should answer. Different priorities. What are the priorities? His priorities are not aligned with uh, what the no, bureaucrat no. believes. No, no, no. Next. Okay. I'll explain. Mm. <clears throat> See, 
we discussed power versus knowledge that is one way of looking um politician and bureaucracy that is a broader way of looking but there is a second level second level is that politician is supposed to be interested in policy making policy issues bureaucracy is interested in implementation of them bureaucrat advises top level and implements what is a politician politician is particularly minister minister looks at the overall thing okay so higher things minister smaller things bureaucracy this actually is the original scheme so uh, minister to oversee the policy formulation why the minister because he is the representative of people's priorities legislature what is legislature for people's priorities and plan everybody can't be a minister so there is there are some ministers ministers ensure that legislature's will is executed but they themselves are not doing anything out how do they do it through bureaucracy so look at the constitutional scheme the constitutional scheme is that legislature people's priorities ministers people's priorities executed actual execution by the bureaucrats so policy formulation by the politicians and implementation by the administrators this is supposed to be the scheme tell me if this point is clear to you baskar is it clear yes sir hmm but what is going on bigger thing administrator is doing and the politician is interested in transfer transfer is not the business of a politician minister that to transfer is the business of administrator this is the most serious issue in a in an administration now let us look at the political structure this is the why it is so you have hundreds of mlas you have around 15 20 ministers taken in, in a state what should an mla do he when he spends crores what should an mla do mla according to constitutional scheme represents people's priorities in legislation only there is nothing more legislature is is for legislation ministry is for execution executive is for execution but is mla interested in legislation why will he be interested he won't be interested why won't he be interested because he is interested in getting next time elected that is his first threat and how will he get elected when he manages his constituency well when he manages his people well when he brings projects when he arranges loans when he constructs roads so by taking care of his constituency he is likely to improve his chances but that is not the constitutional scheme the constitutional scheme is legislation so according to the constitutional scheme most of the legislators actually should have no work why is it happening it is a highly centralized political system so what is politician doing politician really has no idea of legislation he is not interested because whether it is a good legislation or a bad legislation it doesn't improve his chances okay minister also will first be interested in his constituents or okay so they are interested in minor things which they are not supposed to be so this is what is happening so uh, because they are interested in minor things they are influencing give loans transfers postings all kinds of things because it is they that will impact their election charm election chances 
So the real dichotomy between policy formulation and policy uh, execution is not really taking place. But in fact, he's saying, of course, he's saying sub-national level, not national level. The, in those years at national level, ministers have, may have taken policy formulation seriously, but it's about sub-national level, eh? some government, Madhya Pradesh government. So where uh, ministers are not bothered about big issues. So this is one serious issue. And uh, so uh, in fact, if an MLA is left to his constitutional role only, actually he has no role in that because he's supposed to be drafting legislation and he's not interested and not he's competent. So what is he busy with? He's busy with all small, small, small things which administrators should do. So the constitution and the actual reality are not matching. A legislator can ask, we have spent so much of money, finally we are responsible, what are you doing? But that is not there in the constitution. Maximum out of, uh, to give some legitimacy, they arrange something like MP funds. So MP has some control over few crores, that's all. But otherwise, he's out of the entire execution scheme. So this is one very serious issue where the leaders are not bothered about bigger issues. Not that all leaders are not bothered. There are some leaders definitely who are in charge of things. But most MLAs, most MPs, most ministers are basically interested in small, small things that affect their political chances, not interested in the legislation. Tell me, is this point clear to you? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, I take this statement. Okay, this is better. Now go through this statement. This illustrates the real malaise of Indian administration at the sub-national level. Bureaucrats formulate long-term policy and politicians responsible for higher level government decide postings and transfers. This is an utter perversion of the system. Can you tell me how this perversion can be reduced? It can only be reduced, but how can this be reduced? So he's saying this is a perversion because a legislator is not doing legislation. He is interested in administration. So this is the reason for interference in administration because they really don't have the role that is allotted to them, the constitution role. Can you tell me how to reduce this perversion? One answer. Actually, constitution provides the red of how to reduce this perversion, but nobody takes it seriously. Can you tell me what that is? One answer, no second chance. Or one word. Keep, keep hmm? them busy. Keep them busy with work. Which work? Constitutional work is legislation. They are not interested. Whether a good legislation is made or not, how will it improve their chances in constituency? You know? Separation of power. Baskar, hmm? your answer. Educated voters' participation. Even if they are educated, you have to link their participation with their chance, their political success, right? How will a good legislation help them? It is a remote help. It is not for good legislation they have spent crores. Simple solution. Okay, Vishal, one last attempt, please. Very simple, Vishal. Vishal, you, you raised your hand, you're not answering. Yes, sir. What is that? One word answer. Uh, delegation. That is called a decentralization, not delegation. Decentralization. And one very important institution that can be used for decentralization is Panchayati Raj institution. 
where Jilla Parishad chairman can be most important person, like chief minister. So most powerful MLA can be ZB chairman. And around five, four or five MLAs can be ministers at a district level and collector subordinated. Now collector is the head of the government at a district level because of which only 10, 15 ministers have the real power. Nobody has the real constitutional power, real power as per the constitution. So it is a highly centralized system because of which politicians don't have any work. You have hundreds of legislators without any work. On the other hand, if, if, if you go, if you strengthen Jilla Parishad, the most powerful politician will be a Jilla Parishad chairman rather than an MLA. Then people would like to be ministers at the Jilla Parishad level rather than MLAs. Only those MLAs who can be ministers will, will try to be MLAs. So creation of a third tier would make so much in terms of decentralization. That is what constitutionally promised and many people have argued for but it was not done. We will see why it was not done. So this is a highly centralized system in which politicians do not have the task as per the constitutional scheme. And that is why they are doing something outside the constitution. It means their interests and the constitutional scheme hasn't matched. It's not matching. So bureaucrat thinks that you are interfering, but actually what should a politician do? Bureaucrat he, bureaucrat career is not affected by how well he administers, but politician's career is affected by how well he manages his constituency. So who has more interest? Politician. Bureaucrat, if he, if he wants to get good name, he will do otherwise he just doesn't care. His salary, his promotion, nothing is linked to his performance. But politicians, everything. So you have a system that the politicians are checked out of interest system. So they think that what should we do? What should we do to uh, manage election again? And that's what the party people think, that were chief minister, ministers. So there's a huge mismatch between the constitutional scheme and the actual system, which is perversion. And remember why all this is a scope for corruption? There is always a scope for corruption when you are doing things which you are not supposed to. That's why we have need for rules and things like that. But when there is a basically you are doing something which you are not supposed to do, then all kinds of things keep happening. Okay. Is it clear? Okay. So I will. So tell me any comment. You will you will come to these issues again and again. Okay, my arm, please. Uh, so, uh, isn't it the job of a MLA also to look at the execution of work in the constituency? Um, so, just one second. Uh, is it not? That is a very good question. Let us look at that. After looking at execution, tell me what is he supposed to do? So he says somebody is not working. He finds uh, MRO is not working. So what is he supposed to do? So he can raise the grievance with the executive the government. What is that? So he can raise the grievance with the executive the government. That is true. It means he does not have any control over the MRO. So no, no direct control, yes sir. Isn't it? What is that? So no direct control, yes. Sir. Exactly. So he will raise it there and then, okay, he rises uh, with, uh, um, so he will, what will he do? MLA finds an MRO is not working. So what is he supposed to do? So maybe he register it with the government or, or in the legislature, raise it in the legislature. Okay. But uh, so, I mean, his role is to for better formulation of uh, um, law, better formulation of law. I don't think there is anything more. He can make a representation to the minister, but then anybody can make a representation to the minister. Why only MLA? 
So the legislature is also a forum to register grievances of the constituents. You know? Exactly. Legislature is also a grievance of the constituency, but with an intention to make law or create an effective administration. But that finally has no control over an MRO. Yes. So is that right thing? So should, a, should an MLA confine to his constitutional role or he should use his influence with the collector and through the minister do something about this MRO I want him transferred? So I think that would be a legitimate demand, but I don't know. No, no, no. What should a what should a enterprising ML, ML, MLA should do? Suppose you are an MLA, what would you do? Will you if just I, will you just find a grievance complaint and uh, just leave it, or you try to see that MRO is not there? Uh, Isn't it? If MRO doesn't work, let me tell you who is affected between collector and MLA. ML. So the MLA. Exactly. So the people whose interests are going to be threatened do not have the direct role. These are the serious issues. So what, what the bureaucrat thinks is interference should have been the legitimate role of the politician. Yes. Exactly. These are the issues. So he's calling it a perversion. Okay. I mean, is the point clear? Yes, sir. I got your point. Uh, but we will see why we have this kind of bureaucracy. Thank you for asking me so many questions. So nice of you. Okay. Now, go through this. So, before we proceed, uh, uh, one please. Hmm. Who is asking? My sir, this is Bhaskar. Uh, Bhaskar. Okay, please. Hmm. So, uh, can, is it safe to conclude that structural designs of institutions can minimize ethical dilemmas. Of course, of course, there is absolutely no rule about it. No, except no, no objection to this. So that is why it is not rules versus the trust coming to the issue of trust. It is trust plus rules. Okay. So the what is rules? Rules are nothing but institutions. I don't know if you are following. Yes, sir. Rules are nothing but institutions. Okay. But the point is, institutions and rules can never be complete, can never be uh, perfect. So you need other dimensions. That is trust. Okay. So is it safe to say uh, that there uh, will always be a bridge between what is and what ought to be? Thank that you. Exactly. Exactly. That is why, you know, for example, Ambedkar said uh, a good political system or a good society cannot be created through a good constitution. Whether the constitution is good or bad, it finally depends upon who are managing the constitution. What does he mean? Does it mean to say that constitution is not important? No. Constitution is important, but why did he have to say what matters is not the constitution, but the people who run it? Because people matter. Because a book cannot run. It is people who have to run through the book. Bhaskar, are you following? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is the issue. You need to create good institutions, but at the same time, you have to create a better society to run those institutions. Institutions alone cannot save the society. Is the point clear? Yes, sir. Okay, my own. <clears throat> yes, sir, excuse me. Oh. No, you are not. Okay. Now go through this quotation. This is very interesting. This is a different issue. Okay. Are you able to see this? Are you able to see this? Yes, sir. Okay. Now go through this. 
B.G. Deshmukh retired as cabinet secretary in 1989. Okay, I was deputy secretary G.A.D. in Maharashtra in 1960s. I will have to keep the whiteboard only for viewing because people are changing it. Especially if you are using mobile phone, you any touch will change the screen. But I will ensure it is always in a viewing mode. I was looking after the allotment of fiat cars. Our quarterly quota was 90 because at that time it was uh, state controlled. When the file with the first 90 names in the waiting list went to the chief minister, he just kept it aside and sent his own list. I explained how the waiting list was maintained. CM said, but I have to allot cars even out of town to, much, to some people. I asked then how many. He said, give me 20. Next time, I gave left. So I left first 20 blank and went strictly by the waiting list for the remainder. <clears throat> And Deshmukh, who retired as a cabinet secretary. Tell me what do you make of this? This again is an important aspect. So was the secretary breaking the rule or not? First of all, did you get the case? Shibangi, did you get the case? I'm reading the statement, sir. Okay, maybe better to read rather than me reading out. Okay. So this man prepared a waiting list on the, on the ground on very clear following rules and transparency. Chief Minister says, drop it and I have I, you have to give me cards. So did you get it, Shivangi? Yes, sir. Somewhat I got, but uh, I mean, you got you got the event. We'll yeah, yeah, come yeah. to the meeting later. Yes, sir. Okay. So he main basically he maintained a merit list for the ownership of the car through transparency waiting list. Okay. Chief Minister, you drop it. <laughs> you give me twenty cars. So he said, no, this can't be done. But Chief Minister said, no, 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 I need 20. Then he says, I maintained, I give the first, I, I left first 20 blank because that will go to the Chief Minister and went strictly by the waiting list for the remaining, that's 70. So 70 out of merit and 20 to the Chief Minister discretion. So is cabinet, is cabinet, okay, he, that he would be future cabinet secretary. Was Deshmukh floating a rule or not? Yes or no? Very much. But then, should he have done it or he shouldn't have? What do you say, Shiva? Sir, I think uh, there is no other option available for him. He should okay. agree to that. Yeah. Or will you say, no, 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 you transfer me, I can't do it. No, that will be worst case, I think. Why Why is it? Please explain. Uh, who is talking? Shiva? Yes, sir. Uh, please explain. I want you to explain this. Because uh, he has more power to transfer him also. Sir. So, like, uh, instead of getting transferred, he can provide maximum justice within that uh, space provider. What? Instead of? Providing power. Instead of uh, like being transferred, like by mm. the politician, he can provide maximum justice within the like he can provide seventy cars at least to the merit. merit exactly. Team. Yeah. Exactly. That's what I think. So. Okay. Now coming to rules and obliging the chief minister. Let me tell you, all successful officers, without an exception, exception, and I define success as some somebody who has done something good rather than simply made noise. They say, we, we look into politicians' interests, but we know what we can, in what area we can help, and where we will say no. There is a line. So they don't pick up fight with every, in every case, talking about rules. They themselves break, number one, and the politicians are of, 
Okay, so how was the break? This two. So here, he may give the impression that everything is transparent. No, it is not. 70 transparent and 20 chief minister scored. Fine. In a better system, everything should be transparent, but it's okay. It's after all about uh, who is going to own this car. There, isn't, there are no major issues of social justice. So he thought, okay, it's a small issue. And why is he giving this issue? He is saying, this is how we should live with the politician. And this is the kind of understanding. Bureaucrats understand that, for example, you are a chief minister. <laughs> Say colleague telling him, you are a chief minister and you can't give me a car, what are you? Chief minister can't face that remark. So a bureaucrat should understand the compulsions of the politician. He's, he should see to what extent he can accommodate. And where beyond this point, sorry, means there is always a line. Tell me, is my point clear? Deshmukh is saying, he is not saying, I compromised. He is saying, this is what I did and I advise you to do it. This is the way to relate to a politician. Tell me, is the point clear, number one? Number two, is it acceptable? Hmm. Two participants raised. Mudit, tell me. Sir, I clear. Your... Yes, sir. clear and acceptable. Two points? Yes, sir. Sir, but the, uh, sir, if the case is opposite, that uh, if there is allotment of, uh, uh, suppose, say, EWS houses and the CML and the state has only 100 houses, to be allotted. My friend, even, even so, that is the case. Sir, but in that social justice would be hampered if a CMS That is why, even in the case of social justice, he has to see how much. There is simply no escape to the issue of quantity. Let us come into ethical principles, you know. There is simply no, uh, no issue where the quantity doesn't play a role. <clears throat> how much? How many houses? It is like that. How big is this? All this calls for intelligence. You can find any reasonable IAS officer whether he whether he did it. He won't even call it a compromise. That's not a compromise. That's <laughs> that is the only meaningful way of relating. I believe that if, if a bureaucrat doesn't have sympathetic understanding of politician, his education is a waste. Sympathetic understanding. You are, these are your priorities. This is how you are affected. This is how you are a part of it. And I am here to help you to the extent that I can. Let us see how. That is the way bureaucrat should relate. Not that I am here to protect the rules and you are there to violate. Not like that. Basically, together you should do something good. That is the purpose. They go by give and take. Bureaucrat gives certain things and politician gives up something. That is what teamwork and that is what trust is. And let me tell you, this is not true of bureaucrat and politician only. I would say that is true of any relationship. Do husband and wife think exactly like each other? No. Don't they have differences? No. Then they do have differences. Even with any friend, it is like that. You always go along do things together, but there will always be a point where, sorry, beyond me, beyond this, I can't travel. So this is part of any relationship, not just bureaucrat and politician. No individual can, can draw a rigid boundary of principle, that, this, this, no. You will have to relate. Administration is a cooperative work, coordinated effort. I know one collector said very, very clearly to MLA, I will take care of your interests. If there is any problem, I will, I will intervene. So you just don't worry. Like that. 
I am not saying that every officer should have a relationship with every politician like that, but officer should understand what are the implications, complications, what, what does he want, how can he help me and how can I help, but it is not a personal interest, but how certain good things can be done. That should be the attitude of a bureaucrat. So Deshmukh is saying, live like this. He, I don't think he would call this a compromise. Okay. Mudit? Sir, I agree. Uh, that is the practical solution to the problem. But yeah. can we write this in, this in the exam? Of course. Of course. What are we here for? Of course. Of course. And anyway, this is the exam. Even in the worst case, you have to discuss the dilemmas only. Whatever you say in the end. Of course. And this is the chief the cabinet secretary saying it. Why do this? This is very well written book, you know. Arshamandir wrote preface, and yes. some really dedicated officers uh, have praised this book. Yes, and some social scientists praised this book. Jean Ridge. Okay. So the idea that the administration is of rules that should that should be out of your mind. In fact, the whole paper is like that. Will you follow the rules? Often the answer is I don't follow. <laughs> will you listen to the superior? Often I will not. It is like that. Also. So this is about uh, give and take. This is what it is. But it is a. It is very clear. It is a minor case. Okay. It is not like one communal violence. It is not about protecting thugs. It is not like that. But in actual life much bigger issues will act, will be there, though in the examination they may not ask. Sir, I'd like to put a different scenario. Bas Baskar, please. Sir, uh, in the same example, I would like to replace this with, uh, replace the fiat curve with uh, COVID death compensation. That's fine. And Okay, the, the still... question is, the, the, the question is, would quantity matter or will you go by rule? That is the issue. I'm talking about a qualitative issue, uh, which is COVID, not the number. I agree with the number perspective, but we are talking about the quality here. Okay. Uh, COVID we, okay. compensation. Yeah. Okay. Chief Minister insists uh, give less numbers. Hmm. Okay. So will the secretary resign on that ground? Not resign. How do I reason out with that person? So he will think, isn't it? Yeah. That's all. This is only an example. Example of a principle that is, please try to accommodate. That's all. And even if then, if he's not willing to, I mean, even after reason. It is always, cabinet secretary would say, he's a known for a, an honest officer, honest officer. There is always a line. You should say, sorry, this is not mine. That's it. There's no doubt. But the question is, where is that line? I mean, do you have the line or do you simply go by the rules? That is the issue. That is what they are trying to convey. It is not that you do whatever the politician says, you, you compromise. It is not like that. So we may think in terms of what is that line? That is debatable. That is debatable. I mean, is my point clear, Bhaskar? Yes, sir. So my hmm. question is, how do we know where to stop and where to... That is an issue. Come? That yeah. is why we can't be robots. We are human beings. Yeah. Exactly. Always remember, Socrates' solution is true for Socrates. He chose death. And for an officer, choosing resignation. Under certain circumstances. Transfer. Less than that. So all kinds, I mean, in, anything is there. All, there are always options, but you should think in terms of consequences and uh, what are the choices that you have. But whether you are willing to think or you simply go by the rule is the issue. So okay. for the examination purpose here, uh, I'm just speaking of myself. Okay. I might be okay with the example of a fiat car, but I'm That's not fine. okay with the example of COVID. So how do I communicate That's this? That's fine. That's exam. fine. You can you can just give an example and then you can say there is always a line to draw.
and uh, one last point i mean the what is happening now okay now this what uh, see this is what is happening now Okay, go through this now. Okay, now this is the contemporary situation, or maybe slightly different from contemporary. Um, Bhaskar, you have a point. Okay, let me complete. So uh, now I'll give you the total context. The author is saying, um, so basically the primary theme of the author in the first two chapters is that bureaucracy is working in a political context and political sector is changing. And uh, for many years, it has hugely deteriorated. And the deterioration of the political sector is having an impact on the administration. That is his main point. So whatever you understand about the politics, that should throw light on bureaucracy. Because bureaucracy is working under the politicians. What happened to the politics is that politics at one time, you know, people, people who fought for India's independence became the politicians. They were the leaders. They're top. Okay. It is said that Sardar Patel said about IAS, they are like us. When he said they are like us, it was, it was supposed to be a compliment. Now politician says if they are like us, then bureaucrats won't consider it a compliment. So uh, politicians at one time represented very high quality and then it degenerated. Why it got degenerated? You will study in politics that it is a part of democratization. It, it, politics went down, down. And caste, religion, all those things played a very important role. And communalism, all kinds of things. And uh, all kinds of schemes, welfare schemes. So partisan things and variety of ways of winning the elections, rigging, criminals. So uh, all this affected bureaucracy. Because the, these those who are coming to be politicians to get elected again or to reward those who who helped them in the elections, uh, have to do certain things. And bureaucracy is, is bypassed or bureaucracy is made to do certain things. So this is what he says. The postings of collectors and SPs are not decided by the CS or DGP, but by the CM or those close to him. CS and DGP are supposed to go by the administrative criteria, not that um, uh, who signs. Of course, CS and DGP only sign. But I'm talking about who decide. The choices are dictated by vested interests, such as mafia gangs, builders' lobby, and so many other things who control local politics. We and Mora come in 1903 found strong nexus between criminals, politicians, and bureaucrats. So, out of this nexus, what kind of bureaucracy comes out? That is issue. Okay. So, uh, so he says, because of this, the, the trust, loyalty, and a superior protecting a uh, subordinate, all that is broken, all that is broken, and politicians impact. So MRO knows that he is protected if he goes by what the MLA says rather than the collector. Why? Collector can't transfer him, but MLA can. So the unity of administration is simply broken. Politicians interfering at every place. Okay. Uh, so those old ideals 
he says they're gone okay and if you think uh, can we say like this in the examination of course you are, you have the envora committee report but uh, look at what i didn't know you can use second day rc for a purpose like this see look at this we are going to just five more minutes see look at this this second year are able to read corruption is all pervasive leading to the widens of our system both of us criminalization of politics continues unchecked with money and muscle power playing a large role in their acts so we are not able to see this one it's not visible no now visible sir visible sir okay. on on laptop is visible okay okay i'll see what can be done about this so is it clear so don't have doubts whether you can criticize politics or whether you can write admin critically on administration you can you can do it okay this is what second year sir report and one last example i will give you this is interesting with that we will close you can use this as a quotation okay is this visible look at this yes. up chief minister mulayam singh yadav in a conclave of ias officers said this go through this so they can't see the interesting hmm who is that so why do you come and touch my feet why do you come and lick my shoes why do you come to me for personal favors and when you do i will do as you desire and then extract my price from you so he is saying that the bureaucracy's loyalty and that unity is broken through political process and so much that the politician himself is is saying that what kind of a people you are okay did you read this statement hello hmm? did you read yes sir yes sir yes yes so sir that is that is what that's where we are but we were going to discuss uh, variety of good officers good work they have done what, how under certain circumstances certain schemes are uh, successful and uh, how were those successful people success uh, achieved that success so this book deals with uh, many positive things also Mm, but important thing that i got in these two chapters is that the idea of linking with politics the changes in politics larger political context and what is happening to the um, politics and how is it impacting the bureaucracy and over the period of time how things were change okay so you got a taste of this book right yes or no yes sir i will post this uh, sheet to a padlet as i will be posting the entire material okay. so you can go through this i'll think of a better way of presenting through the whiteboard without taking much time 
ಒಂದು ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ 